like <sighs> how how is it that you guys resolve uh arguments yeah. and disagreements in your house uh it, it, talking <laughs> talking <laughs> it really just hey man it's this new thing you use your voice if you don't have a voice your hands uh it it really is just kind of it going um hey uh this is, you know, this is what happened, and 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 this is what I appreciated, and this is what I didn't appreciate, and how how can we how can we do better in the future? Um, and that those are candid, those are weird conversations, those are hard conversations, but you know, for us, we're like, yeah, like you know, I, we don't want that to happen. Um, we want to do better. How can we do better? Um, and and it's figuring that out together. And, and I mean, for us, for this last time. I mean, we're like, we've always talked about, hey, should we go to therapy? Maybe we should go. And it's, it's seriously not like, we we freaking need it. You need it. But it is like us together, like, hey, maybe we need to go talk to somebody. You know, maybe we need to go talk to somebody about, you know, about about marriage and life and, 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 and our family and our kids and how we need to deal with these things. And, and a lot of times we, you know, I'll say therapy. And when we, we go to, you know, her parents' house or when my mom comes and visits or, you know, when we're at dinner with another couple, like all of that is like therapeutic for us because, uh, th so there is a, a, a group in the, in South Carolina where we live. It is a, uh, it's a group of interracial couples who are about our age, who uh, the guys there's, and there's one girl who are from East Africa. They moved to the States with their family and they've married white women. And we all have biracial kids running around and fighting and playing with each other when we meet up. So it's this really, really beautiful picture of, of, you know, not only like a multiracial marriage, but it is also like a multiracial, you know, you know, group and, and, and outings. And we had like a Christmas party last year and it's, it is awesome. Um, so it's talking to them and being like, Hey, like, what do you, you know, what do you say when, when something like this happens or what do you do when you want to, how do you express that? And that, um, I never, when, when you, when you all reached out, I remember thinking like, man, what has saved, uh, me as a young married Christian has been young married Christians, you know, being around young married Christians as well has been like extremely vital for me because we can compare notes, right? We can figure things out. For us, you know, where I'm I'm African and my wife is you know from the Midwest, how do we how do we do this? How do y'all do this? How do you plan on raising your kids? What culture do you plan on dominating them do, dominating in your kids kids' lives? Are you going to teach them Swahili? Are you going to teach them another language? You know, or can they take French when they go to school or Spanish or all these different things or what school are you putting them in? So there have been so many questions, right? That um, you know, may maybe old married Christians that have, but the people that I've related to the most have been young married Christians who are also like d down in the weeds, in the thick of it with us. And, and we can ask them like, Hey, how are you, how are you doing this? And then they tell us. And, um, and then from there, like, man, we leave and we'll be on the drive back. And we're like, wow, did you remember what Dara said or Mark or, or, you know, Daniel, like we, all these things were like, man, that was really good. I can't, you know, and a lot of times it has been great moments and, you know, of course, and date ideas and trips, but you know, uh, I've learned so much more from, you know, just, Hey, we had, we had a bad, I remember, um, uh, uh some couple friends of ours, Mark and Dara, who are, uh, he, Mark is from Kenya and, uh, they said, you know, we, one time they said they had a really kind of, and they, I don't think they'd mind me saying this, but they had like a, like some rift in their marriages, you know, just from culture and being and all these different things. And, and they said, you know, we, we knew we weren't going to get a divorce, but we knew we were just going to be very unhappy for the rest of our lives, uh, very unhappy for the rest of our lives. And, um, and, uh, and I, I, I was like, wow, you know, um, and so even from something like that, just even us being young married Christians too, we're like, Hey, now my wife and I, we think about that story, you know, and, th and their, their candidness and sharing that. And we can go, wow, like, what can we do? You know, and th they have since resolved and they have a great marriage and they're g going back to Kenya to be missionaries. Praise God. But, you know, but, but, but also like, and they have three beautiful kids who we love watching and hanging out with. Um, but now it's even for us, we're just trying to figure it out. Like, okay, how, how can we also be, you know young married and happy right the entire time but young married and 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 be on the same team the entire time as well with with all of that i feel like as far as our uh country has gone as far as our culture has gone um i'm sure that you guys still come against being a multiracial couple 
I know that you you had made a joke in one of your videos about like you know multiracial couple has yeah. a, a child and it's the first rapper to make a mixed take. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was clever and it's cute. But there's a serious side of this. Yeah, and I'm sure that going out in public, uh, you know, some of my best friends, Molly and Anthony Melvin, uh, same same situation as you. Uh, she's white. He is very black. Yeah. Uh, very dark. And when they go out in public, you know, their three mixed kids are with them and they get those looks. And, you know, sometimes people will say certain things. Uh, I mean, they're living in a very small town in Kentucky. Uh, and right there in that Bible belt, you're in South Carolina, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm sure yeah. that it's not all, you know, daisies for you guys. Yeah. How has that been? Uh, ha ha have there been any kind of conflict coming your way? Yeah, there there was a uh, one one thing in particular. So my wife, uh, she she went to college in Greenville, but she lived in uh, Charleston, which is about three three hours away. So w when she was in college, she attended a small country church, and um, she played piano there. And she I think she led like their their music. She was like the music director there. It's a small. Yeah, I don't think they even exceeded 50 people and um and those people kind of like adopted her while she was in college and she really loved them and then when um she moved back after she graduated she moved back to charleston to live with her family and um and uh during that time that's when we met after a few a few months after she had moved back and uh and i think she had maybe put on facebook that we were dating at the time and and some of the people from the country church uh which greenville's like a kind of up and coming kind of city but there are still pockets like you kind of drive out and you're like whoa there's a lot of a lot of there's a lot of different flags out here you know what i mean uh so so greenville is is, is like that you kind of go hey this is super this is extremely uh this is kind of like a modern city but then you kind of drive out and you're like there's a lot of like squatted trucks you know or whatever so it is different and so um while she was you know when she posted that she was dating me uh one of the people from the, her church, I think, I don't know if she had attended the church randomly while she was up here. I think she did. She went to the church one Sunday, and they they had asked her, "Hey, what what is what is this about you and, and that and that African American fella?" And um, and uh, and she said, "Yeah, that's that's my boyfriend." And they said, "I think one of the people said this is also 2017." They said, "Well, you know, well, you know, well, we don't agree with it, but uh, and um." Yeah, and that was kind of like the the end of like her kind of friendship or relationship with them, and um, yeah, and she told me that, and I wasn't like I wasn't like fuming. I just remember thinking like, wow, this you know, sad. This is very sad, and it and it really and it hurt her for for a while because you know she had been close with these people for a very long time, and and yeah, yeah, still later on too, I think she had gotten some messages too, and it wasn't anything harsh. It was just kind of like you know like. You know, we we don't we don't necessarily agree agree with that, uh, but what what's very kind of crazy is uh so from that uh there was one gentleman who had went there who was always very kind to to Grace, uh, he after we got married, uh, after we got married a couple months later, he reached out to uh he reached out to Grace and said hey you know I'd love to can I can I buy you and your husband ice cream, uh and. and so we went up and we went out. We, we met him for ice cream and we 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 ate ice cream. And, and Grace was pregnant at the time, and um, and he was just very sweet. He was like, "Well, you know, I'm really glad to meet you." And I was able to shake his hand and 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 to see him and to uh, and to uh, talk to him. And and he was just a very sweet, you know, kind of southern old man. And that to me was, you know, I think any else like my first instinct was like no we're not you know they didn't support our, our our marriage or anything else but i was like no like let's let's go meet him let's go meet him and i wasn't like i'm gonna prove a point i'm gonna i have some harsh words but it was well no we seriously went out for ice cream we we, we just talked a little bit and told him we we're expecting a, a little baby boy and um and it was really good and yeah so, so so something like that like yeah it does you know when we drive by kind of when we're heading up to the mountains sometimes we'll drive by and that does kind of hurt my my wife's heart because you know there's a whole kind of a whole relationship there's a history there that's kind of tainted now because of you know because of us uh because of our relationship and you know it's not really pleasurable but but we enjoy it and other than that man like people have been i remember even my parents growing up you know and this is no offense to them they had moved to the states they didn't have such great experiences with um you know like they they seen so many divorces happen 
in just in the in in their community they had seen so many divorces happen in in the churches that they attended and in the communities that they were a part of that they did not they just thought wow americans don't appreciate they don't they don't appreciate marriage and they would tell us not out of not r- racially motivated but they'd say I, I don't marry white people don't marry white people you know and this wasn't out of like they, they don't, no they were just kind of like i don't we don't understand their 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 opinion on marriage we don't understand they don't they don't respect marriage you know, we wouldn't recommend it. Um, and and we knew that. And even when I went to Tanzania, when we went back to Tanzania to be missionaries, uh, you know, moving back. I remember when I was moving back for college and I, you know, was telling, I was, you know, was saying goodbye to some of the people in our church. And some of the ladies would say, hey, don't bring back a white woman. You know, come back and get married here. And people would be like, hey, we got to, we'll, we'll find your wife here. And what did I do? Against, against all, you know, I came back and, and I married Grace. And, um, and, but more than anything, I was able to tell my mom about Grace. My, my I started dating Grace. My dad had passed away a, a few months later, tragically. I, and, but he had talked to Grace on the phone. And my mom had talked to Grace and had met Grace. And, and they, they no, no longer felt that way, you know? They, they, and this wasn't like a, you know, it wasn't like a fight. And I had to, like, I was screaming and dragging out match. But, but I just said, you know, like, she loves the Lord. And her, her family loves the Lord, you know, and, and, and I love her and then mm. she loves me. And, and so, you know, my mom was very supportive and my family w- was too, you know, and I had some family members fly from Tanzania to be a part of the wedding. And when Grace, this was in 2019, Grace was pregnant. We, we flew to Tanzania for a couple of weeks and everybody was so excited to meet Grace. Nobody said, you know, harsh words at all, but they were very excited. They were very excited about seeing the baby too. We were going to go last year, but COVID prevented that. But, um, but yeah, so it's really cool. I'm 29 to live in this 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 arc or this kind of like a timeline to where it was weird and people are gonna make you know my parents would say stuff like people make fun of your kids if they're mixed and all these. My son is the most popular kid in church in the kids ministry at church. By the way, as <laughs> he is so freaking popular, they take love that him. little take, Johnny. Take that. <laughs> But, you know, to go from to go from this time where it was weird and kind of taboo and people didn't really know what it was um, to to now. And, and there are some people who are still kind of against it. But then there are people who will, you know, or be it will be at restaurants or somewhere and they'll just come up and they're like, what beautiful kids. We love your kids. So I'm I'm extremely, extremely thankful. And I mean, I mean. Yeah, I'm just extremely thankful, man. And I'm not even saying that like, I, I, I didn't set out to go. I only want to. I want to marry a white. Per- you know, I want to marry a white person. A white, per- but it was this kind of thing. Like when, when I met Grace, like we knew, and I don't think we ever talked about like, oh, we, in premarital counseling, the, uh, you know, our counselor had brought up. You know, you know, there might be some challenges along the way, and we did kind of, kind of experience that already. But we also knew we're like, hey, you know. We we know who we are and we know what we're doing here, you know, and um, and we know we're not sinning and we know that you know it's not against the but so so yeah that was that was just kind of where we stood and we enjoy and I love I mean now more than ever man I love seeing you know mixed couples just kind of everywhere they're mixed kids like uh, to me that is so encouraging because I remember a time when it was like you know and so many African families who have moved here they're like oh don't do that um. You know, and now all these families now who are, you know, in, in healthy marriages and kids and, and, and just the picture of, I mean, marriage is, every marriage is a mixed marriage. Like, can I say, has anybody said that before? I'm not trying to, like, make, like, a soundbite here. But essentially, you know, there is more, you know, there's just, there are more elements to our marriage now because there are two cultures involved. But, you know, if you're from up north and from down south and you get married, there are a lot of culture differences there, <laughs> there too. But, you know, I'd say more so for for us who've married somebody from a different continent. Hey y'all, we hope you loved this conversation. Here at Young Married Christian, we are on a mission to see a gospel-centered home made available for every single child in the foster care system. There are 400,000 kids in the foster care system and there are 400,000 churches in America. Wow, that is crazy. This is absolutely a solvable problem and we wanna be a part of it. If you wanna join us in that mission, text the word freedom to 833-370-1610. 833-370-1610. 833-370-1610. I just did it. And another thing you can do that is really helpful is to smash the like button on this video. Smash it like Satan's face. Crush it like it's Lucifer's head. <laughs> It really helps us a ton. So smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. That's it. (laughs) Smash the like button on this video.